Um, welcome, everyone. Um, uh, we aim to start at, uh, on time. Um, so um, as a reward uh, for being punctual, um, I will bore you <laughs> with some uh, introductory slides and a little bit of um, um, uh, my own resume. Um, so um, today's topic is safety analysis of uh, water injection of a turbofan compressor. I just um, need to, okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the participants out of my screen. Right. So today's topic is um, CFD analysis of water injection in a turbofan compressor. Um, thank you very much for joining. The uh, talk is delivered by the International Society for Computational Fluid Dynamics, um, which I'm a co-founder of. And um, we have been organizing this kind of topics uh, for the past three years. Um, uh, so that um, uh, everyone who is interested in the developments of CFD uh, can can enjoy that sort of um, uh, initiative. Um, and this wouldn't be possible with uh, my lovely team. So um, this is the first chance. Um, um, this is actually a very special moment for me because it's the first time uh, I, I'm giving a talk myself. So please don't confuse a co-founder with a good speaker. We had uh, speakers that I can't compete with. Uh, I founded the Society for, for a different... Uh, reason, uh, but today is it's it's my turn, so to say, and uh, I will I will give it a try. But anyway, this wouldn't be possible with the um, uh, with the team that I have, and um, I wanted to uh, uh, acknowledge that um, um, this is the first time that I had the chance to do it publicly. So thank you very much for running the platform. Thank you very much for for uh, yeah um, supporting me from the from the behind the scenes, so to say. Um, some of the uh, committee members are here and um, are providing are providing technical support. Um, right. So a little bit about uh, me. I just tried to um, reduce uh, reduce uh, uh, it to the details that um, might be uh, relevant to 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 your interest and to the talk. So basically, it's 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 kind of my CFD journey. CFD journey. CFD meaning the computational fluid dynamics. Um, I started um, my studies at the University uh, University of Siegen. Um, uh, in Germany, where I was working on uh, uh, development and validation of lattice Boltzmann codes at uh, um, inst an, an institute there, um, I was also developing methods for synthetic turbulence generation, and that was part of my uh, uh, mechanical engineering degree uh, final thesis. Uh, during my studies, I had the chance to join Rolls Royce for a bit, um, one and a half years, um, and um, I was uh, focusing on the modeling of oil and heat management systems and their components. Um, a little bit of um, CFD, but uh, mainly reduced order modeling and uh, mathematical methods. Um, today, I'm going to talk about uh, my most uh, recent research, which is um, water injection in turbofan. And this has been done at Cranfield University, where I am at the moment. Um, I mentioned already that I co-founded the ICFT as well. Um, uh, and um, uh, recently, I got invited to join a... Uh, um, another exciting topic which basically would combine the fundamental expertise that I've got um, in, back in Germany, the industrial expertise that I got um, um, at Rolls-Royce and the applied science expertise that I've got at Cranfield, um, all in one, so to say, and I will be responsible for uh, development of engine icing models, um, uh, code, uh, oh, sorry, code development and validation and experiments. So um, this, is, um, this is my CFD journey. Um, so now, without further ado, I uh, want to introduce you to the topic itself. So this is um, how uh, the current it looks like um, from 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 the air. Um, it it's a bit um, um, untypical, I would say. It looks more like a research institution rather than uh, an, a university. Uh, you can see. Uh, well, I mean, there have been some recent developments. There are some new new buildings over there, etc. Uh, quite interesting uh, um, uh, centers. Uh, centers. Um, the building that I'm working in is here. So that's the building. It's basically an old hangar with a little bit of facade uh, in front of it. And this is the entrance. And maybe <laughs> perhaps you're wondering why I'm showing this. Well, if this would be a, a physical lecture, I would have the chance to start it right there. Uh, downstairs, we have a small museum, uh, engine museum. And um, I could start uh, the talk there and then take you up to the venue later on. It's a quite interesting place, not not too big, but um, there are three interesting engines inside. Actually, actually more, but three 
uh, three um, aircraft engines. One of them, uh, the, the one uh, at the back, is, uh, uh, is a Concorde engine, um, which is quite, uh, it's a rarity. It's, it's, not, not, um, um, it's not easy to find. Um, uh, today, however, I would focus uh, on this engine in front, which is a Rolls-Royce engine RB211 because it's a turbofan engine and my research uh, um, on what on water injection focused not uh, uh, on the military applications uh, uh, but on the on turbofan uh, civil um, um, aircraft ap applications so this is the um, uh, the photograph um, of that engine from the side and the reason why i have done it is because i wanted to show you how explain you a little bit how how the engine works um, please forgive me if you know it already. I know that uh, the audience is diversified and we have some specialists um, and there, but um, I also have some family members and other people joining in. So um, I, I had to uh, face the difficult task of, of uh, um, compromising a little bit be between specialist uh, content and introductory content. So I hope, I hope at least you will enjoy the visualiz visualization. I was very proud of myself. You can look at the mounting here, there. I was able to match it exactly. So this is this is the the, the um, uh, cross section of the RB211 engine. Um, right. So just you know a small note on how a jet engine works. And the simplest way to explain it perhaps is um, we use this um, sack squeeze uh, um, um, bank and blow principle. So basically the air is sucked in and it's quite violent. Um, um, you, you can imagine that the modern engines, uh, they suck uh, uh, up to one tone of air per second. So this is the amount of air that goes through the engine. This engine is a little bit smaller, smaller so I would expect that um, the mass flow is maybe something around half a ton, but still quite a lot, considering that air has, hasn't a, a, a big density, right? So the air split then, this is typical to turbofan engines. So in, in military engines, you have only the core uh, in the typical jet engines, but in turbofan engines, part of the air is redirected into so-called bypass, and it just provides thrust, right? The force that drives the, the uh, aircraft uh, um, forward. Uh, now, part of the air is, is going into the core, and this is you know where the interesting stuff happens. So the air is compressed, then it's, well, not the air is burned, but the fuel is injected and it's burned in the presence of air using the oxygen from air. And then it's blown out via turbine uh, stages, which basically extract the energy from the air, um, uh, which is then led back by the shaft, by the by the mechanical shaft, back to the compressor, and is driving driving the compressor again, which again delivers the air, etc. And part of the air, um, um, well, actually not part of it. Oh, the air is exhausted um, at the back of the of the engine, uh, which provides additional thrust as well. And uh, the air, um, although it cools throughout the turbine, it's it's still hot at the um, at the at the exit. So, um, okay, what's the issue with, with that? What's with, what, well, better, I would say, uh, what's the challenge with that? Uh, I think there are a lot of, lot of challenges. Um, uh, turbo, uh, turbo fan engines or, or general jet engines are probably the most uh, PhD savvy uh, machines that they were ever built. So I don't know how many P doctoral uh, projects were run on, on uh, jet engines. So they are, there, are, there are so many interesting things that, uh, uh, that are happening there. But uh, what, what is my challenge, so to say, and where, where I focused on? Um, if you um, <clears throat> look um, um, at the engine from a more um, general perspective, a thermodynamic perspective, it's, um, it works according to the Joule uh, uh, cycle or Brighton cycle. Um, um, which uh, basically uh, uh, is well, it's it's um, depicted um, of, of is illustrated here, um, and again we have we have uh, here a compression, uh, um, and then um, um, uh, heat um, addition at a constant temperature and uh, uh, extraction, um, or um, well, um, how I would um, say um, expansion air expansion. Uh, uh, back to the um, ambient pressure. Um, <clears throat> um, why I'm showing you this, just to give you an idea 
um, uh, how the how the how the thermodynamic cycle works, and to highlight one important feature of that cycle. So to be able to um, to, to uh, increase the efficiency of that cycle. So basically, the work that you get out of the compressor uh, related to the work. Uh, well, sorry, out, out of the engine related to the work that you uh, that you have to put into it. Uh, you need to uh, increase pressure, and this is this has been recently. Well, not recently, but throughout the years, it has it has been a trend. Uh, since the pressure lines are diverge, diverging, uh, if you go to higher pressures, uh, you you have you, you can extract more energy from the flow. So what happens is that the new engines uh, aim for higher and higher pressures. Um, at the back of the compressor, basically the pressure uh, the, of the mm, air which goes into the combustor. And this is an um, a, a unpleasant consequence, uh, which is the temperature. The temperature uh, um, um, in the compressor is getting higher and higher. And uh, in nowadays engine, it's close. It's, it's actually beyond the melting point of the, of the turbo materials that uh, the turbo bl turbine blades are made of. And uh, we can cool them because of, of uh, film cooling and a lot of um, uh, quite complex stuff that is going, going on there, coating, etc. So that that the temperature remains, that the temperature of the blade remains be, be, um, below the main melting point. But the, the, the point here is that uh, that uh, increasing the the pressure, the efficiency of the engine of the whole engine, uh, you increase also the temperature. And this is our second problem. Um, well our actual problem not the second problem as actual problem which uh, which is the uh, the dependency of the nitrogen oxide emissions on the temperature so if you increase the temperature you can see that this is an exponential function so it's not um, linear it increases uh, quite aggressively and um, in the high temperature range a small change in temperature causes uh, can cause nox to double um, and this is where 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 the challenge challenge comes from, and uh, where water injection can potentially come in and and um, um, help to alleviate that. As you see, for example, the carbon emissions, carbon related emissions, are are a little bit less problematic when it's when it's, uh, if we're talking about uh, temperature because they decrease with temperature. So um, in, in, in my studies, I focus only on, on the compressor component. And this is where we inject water uh, here. Uh, um, this is for various reasons that I can't explain right now. But one of them is icing. For example, if you in, in, uh, inject behind the fan, uh, the temperature is already elevated. So you, you, you mitigate the risk of, of icing, sort of. Um, right. So this is um, the, the highlight of my, of my research. Um, um, perhaps um, it, it doesn't it doesn't show you much uh, uh, it doesn't uh, show you much what's happening inside of the engine in terms of the parameters like temperature pressure etc uh, but uh, it gives you an idea about the setup so basically uh, this is a turbofan engine that I designed um, <clears throat> I'll talk about it a little bit uh, more later on and this is exactly where the water is injected uh, it goes throughout the stages um, and then it's exhausted at the back. So bear in mind that this is a, just a visualization. So in, in reality, the uh, the uh, the rotor stages this and this. They will it they would rotate, um, right? Uh, actually, in the in the other direction. Um, but um, for for the visualization purposes, this is um, 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 kept um, frozen. Mm. Right. Um, the research is a continuation of previous research um, um, uh, by the Dr. Block, which is hopefully on the call today. Uh, you can check um, the details. Perhaps uh, when I publish the recording, I will I will um, put um, um, well I will list the, all the all the work that has been done before. And um, so so what what's the research question here? Um, a lot of work that has been done before um, 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 focused on analytical models. Analytical models are very good, very handy in terms of uh, predicting some parameters, but there are other things like compressor efficiency that can be predicted by analytical models. Uh, this is due to the nature of the analytical models, which simplify things and they don't consider uh, um, aerodynamic effects. They don't consider um, um, uh, the 
compressor geometry, and they, they are a very, um, a very simplified um, representation of the reality. The other question that we had is what are the aerodynamic implications? But today I will focus only, uh, uh, because of the time restrictions, obviously, I focus only the uh, compressor efficiency aspect. So now, um, perhaps before we move to the topic, uh, a little bit um, of a philosophical discussion, um, um, when, when I started my PhD, it was some, sometime around 2016, uh, I was kind of at the, at the peak of, 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 of that curve, uh, almost at the peak. And what I was seeing, I was seeing obviously only the historical data, I couldn't see the future. Um, it's a, a, a huge increase in, um, in aviation. Uh, 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 well, uh, in aviation market. So we, we, we kind of uh, assume that if the trend continues to, to, to go like this, um, it will, uh, that the uh, number of passengers uh, carried will double in just 20, 20 30 years. Um, and this um, obviously um, uh, it's not more uh, uh, it's not not the case anymore because of COVID pandemic and just just to um, um, to show you how, what is the impact of COVID on aviation uh, how huge it is I, I, I extracted this this chart from from the ICAO um, um, report and I found quite uh, amusing well not not really amusing but um, interesting the the word here collapses so it's really a collapse if you look. At the terrorist attacks um, at at 9/11, uh, uh, there was there was so much talk going on how, how the uh, air traffic is going to change, um, how the perception uh, uh, of people is going to change, whether people will be willing to travel, etc. And you see that the aviation um, uh, kind of stopped growing at that point for 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 a few years, but but. This is nothing comparable to COVID. So the question now is, okay, so what's the point of doing any research in the aviation if the aviation is down? Right, I mean, this is not market, market driven. This is driven by, by, by uh, governmental restrictions, of, uh, of course. And um, I think it's reasonable to assume that uh, the aviation market will recover. Perhaps uh, uh, the landscape will change a little bit, but, um, and maybe it won't grow at, at such a fast rate, but, uh, I would argue that um, this is the point where we can really rethink how, how, um, what are the, uh, uh, tech, what is the technology used in the aviation? How we can go greener? Um, how we can use better, uh, more sustainable uh, technologies? And water injection is definitely a part of it. And just to give you. Um, an idea how big the uh, aviation industry is and that it's not really realistic that it's, it's going to vanish. Uh, um, uh, it's, if, if you would rank it after the GDP gross uh, domestic product, it would be the 70th, 17th country in the world, which is larger than, than some, some members of the G20. And uh, it's basically uh, around the same size as the economy of, of Netherlands. Um, so, right, uh, another point maybe that it's not here. Um, um, today we're looking at um, um, alternatives like uh, hydrogen combustion, for example. So instead of having kerosene in the, in, in the engines, uh, um, uh, we, we would burn hydrogen. Uh, synthetic fuels, um, partly electric and fully electric um, solutions, etc. So water injection could be also part of those solutions, um, um, at least in the solutions that still involve combustion. So for example, hydrogen is, is, is been known as notorious for uh, very high burning temperatures and um, um, the flame is quite hard to control. So water injection could help uh, 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 there as well. Right, um, so this is my last introductory slide. Um, for the general audience, um, um, what is computational fluid dynamics? This is basically uh, where I, my field of work, so to say, my field of research. Um, although this project is more focused on using the computational methods rather than, um, and then extending them. And uh, just to give you an idea what it is, um, Every, uh, everyone remembers from school some equations, uh, simple equations, simple functions that have solutions. So function has, has solutions, usually uh, uh, um, variables as solutions. Uh, differential equations, so for example, equation of, 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 mo of motion, if you throw a ball or something, uh, they have functions as solutions. So there are some uh, relatively simple um, 
phenomena, physical phenomena that we can describe describe with differential equations, um, and and we can um, obtain analytically a solution, a function, and then we know, for example, that the ball will uh, uh, have a certain trajectory. In fluid dynamics, uh, this is um, much more complicated, and the uh, the set of differential equations that describes um, the motion of the fluid is basically um, it, it doesn't have an analytical solution. At least it's not proven yet. And the idea really is to to uh, discriticize the, the the problem in very 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 small pieces. Um, in in in, in a, it's called grid. So perhaps you have seen it. Um, um, and in in this grid, uh, uh, it's assumed um, 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 that the um, the phenomena, well, the changes are uh, linear or nearly linear. So basically, this criticizes the, 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 the whole problem in so many uh, uh, small pieces uh, that um, the change, you can describe the change uh, within the, the, the grid. Um, and um, um, uh, then you can, in, you can basically integrate it numerically. A good uh, representation of, of, um, of what um, CFD does and what are the different methods, because there are also different methods, um, um, is, is a weather chart. So, for example, if you look at the day-by-day uh, -day temperature recording, uh, this is from, from London, um, you see that there's a lot of fluctuation. Some days are much hotter, some days much colder, etc. So, this is, you know, if you would record um, uh, in, in a, in a uh, velocity, well, sorry, in a flow field, if you would record uh, a, a velocity, for example, through one, one point, it would very much look like that. Uh, then, uh, uh, you can simplify it a little bit, LES, which is basically a, a method of filtering out of the all the small vortices, all of the small turbulence, and leaving only the bits that matter. Uh, and this would look like this. Basically, you have a kind of filter that simplifies uh, the uh, the average, well, um, uh, the, the the fluctuations, and gives you some sort of average behavior. Not really average, but global behavior of the of the vortices. And then it runs which is even simpler than that and basically gives you the average behavior. And this is still very useful for industrial applications. So we always need to ask uh, ourselves what time scale uh, we're interested in. So for example, um, as, a, as, a, as a human, uh, um, um, if, we, uh, you know, if you ask me what temperature uh, is today, um, uh, you're interested on, uh, in, in day by day scale, right? But um, in, in gas turbines, well, I mean, this can be, uh, this is not always the case, but um, my, my turbine, well, my uh, compressor spins at uh, 4,215 um, RPM uh, rotation per minute. So you can imagine that um, this, um, 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 there's, there's a good chance that we can, you can uh, um, capture some, some, some effects um, if we, if we um, uh, apply the um, um, average um, um, uh, analysis <clears throat> just to the uh, uh, just because of, of the of the repetitive uh, and and uh, frequent nature of the of the um, um, uh, of the um, flow in the turbine. Well, this is not al 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 always the case. I, I, um, um, I'm sorry. If, if, I guess many specialists wouldn't agree with me, and there are a lot of unsteady studies uh, looking at different phenomena in turbines. But if you're interested at water injection and you know the um, let's say um, um, steady state effect on it, uh, and not interested in the transient um, effects, then uh, uh, this is this is um, good enough. So. Um, <clears throat> um, Right, um, and this is kind of an overview of the work. Um, um, I, I want to show you very shortly uh, 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 um, um, my research journey. I was a little bit, um, um, I, I w was considering whether well, I should um, show you um, the water injection studies straight away or show you the research journey. Uh, and um, as my supervisor says, and the research is a journey, it's not a destination. So I thought maybe um, I will show you, it was a bit more fair to show you actually how, what it uh, took to get to the water injection. I have only a few slides on that, uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's fair to say it's 75% of my PhD. So first of all, we, we did some validation studies. Um, what, what is a validation? So basically um, the fact that uh, computational fluid dynamics is uh, uh, can describe um, um, a very complex, uh, well, can solve a very complex differential system, it doesn't mean that it does it correctly uh, at all circumstances, right? 
So there are so many things um, um, that one needs to consider while uh, setting up a computational fluid dynamics analysis. And the more you simplify things, so if you if you remember uh, uh, this slide, so if you go that route, the more you simplify the well, the more you want to leave out of, of the flow, the more uh, uh, the, the more complicated the um, the um, well, the, the more careful you have to be with the assumptions that you do. So um, there, are, there are many things that uh, um, influence, um, um, influence um, uh, Arant's analysis, which is the mesh size, turbulence models, um, averaging techniques, etc. So we wanted to start very simple. Uh, so instead of starting with the whole Tubofan case, which is a, a huge case, a lot of stages, uh, then then you have transition between the rotating and stationary elements, right? Because rotors rotate and the stators they stay in place, and then you have to transfer the, the equations from from rotational frame of reference to stationary frame of reference. So we, we to avoid avoid that that uh, that complexity and and uh, be able to uh, single out some influences, um, we started with something very simple, which is just a single rotor. In this case, it's not a NAS rotor 67. So people that work with compressors will know what it is. And we apply it around single rotating passage analysis. Um, this is how the numeric uh, case looks like. So you can recognize the grid here. This grid is ice space. Uh, you need to apply some boundary conditions because it's a differential system. So obviously to close it, uh, uh, you need to um, have some boundary conditions in place. Um, and um, this is just a very short summary of the um, uh, sensitivity analysis that we did. We investigated, okay, what is the sensitivity if you change the grid? So if you, disc if you change the discretization of that space, how the solution changes? Then how when you average the data, um, 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 to, to uh, produce the compressor maps, um, what, is the, uh, what is the proper averaging technique? Then we investigated also six turbulence models um, to, to understand what is the impact of the turbulence uh, uh, model um, uh, on, the, on the solution. Um, this is, um, I, I don't want to talk uh, about the results here. It's just an example of, this is actually the, uh, the results from the uh, turbulence uh, model study. Uh, but it's it, perhaps it's 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 um, good to mention at this stage that this is a a, a very common way uh, um, to um, illustrate the turbo machinery performance. So basically, you have a, a mass flow here and a pressure ratio here and efficiency here. And um, in reality, in practice, you would run an experiment, and then. Um, um, during the experiment, you vary the mass flow or the back static pressure, and you obtain uh, different points um, of operation. And uh, um, um, uh, you can use it later on to describe you, uh, the, 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 the operation of your mach machine. So obviously, if it's a, it's a, a multi-stage machine, it's a bit more complicated, and each stage has, has its own uh, uh, design speed line, so to say. Um, but this is how, how we used to present the, the, the overall performance results. Um, now we coming uh, uh, finally to the topic of, of um, water injection. So water injection required um, its own uh, sensitivity studies as well. Uh, so there is a, a lot of uh, there are a lot of parameters that are not really uh, straightforward, and it's it's um, it's not um, there's no rule or guide uh, 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 how, what what values you would choose. For example, for the injection velocity, um, this this might depend on your injection system, and and um, so we wanted to understand what is the sensitivity of that. Then, uh, what is the sensitivity of the initial dropper distribution? Then, uh, numerics again, we, we simplify things. So so if you have a um, spray in 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 practice. Uh, in a real world scenario, the number of droplets that are produced by that spray by, by that spray are, are billions. This is um, uh, absolutely not feasible to um, um, to inject in uh, in in an well numerical case uh, because uh, the computational resources would be so huge that um, we wouldn't be able to uh, um, finalize the analysis. So what you need to do is uh, apply some statistical analysis and inject uh, a numerical part. part Particles they call sometimes parcels that are representative of of um, 
the real particles. And um, the same as, as, the, as the flow, well, the Eulerian space of the flow uh, uh, has some sensitivity to, 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 to its discretization level. Uh, also the Lagrangian space, which I will talk about a little bit um, uh, uh, soon, um, has also its own sensitivity. Uh, uh, so it, it, it needed to be investigated. And this is quite interesting. What I wanted to show you uh, is the convergence chart for uh, for for the wet um, uh, wet cases. So even though it's a RANS analysis, so it's a steady state case, it's so hard to uh, uh, achieve a proper convergence. And you see that with very little particles, the fluctuations in the flow field, well, the solver fluctuations actually are are quite um, quite huge. Uh, and they well, they they they're not acceptable. And then once we increase the uh, number of uh, particles um, or the parcel size, the fluctuations get smaller and smaller. Um, right. So the second stage of, of, of my research focus on turbofan compressor design. Um, right. This is the compressor that I designed. Um, and you might ask yourself why, why why to design a compressor where they already uh, they are already a lot of compressors out well uh, um, uh, in 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 operation. Well, the problem is that we had the project wasn't it was an academic project uh, uh, and it wasn't associated with any of the big uh, engine manufacturers. Um, so we have to come up with our own open source geometry. Uh, but as it turned up, uh, no one of of the the available ge geometries. Um, uh, uh, suited our purpose, so we had to develop it on our own. The good, uh, the the good um, um, news is that um, uh, we we want to well, we working on our, uh, on publishing this, this 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 geometry, and it will be freely available to anyone who wants to run. Uh, um, uh, a turbofan uh, analysis. So um, I'm not going to talk uh, in detail about the development, um, but um, again, it was um, um, perhaps 60% um, or yeah of my PhD just just just, just to develop this um, uh, this compressor, uh, which finally uh, enabled the water injection uh, studies. So if I can recommend something, don't um, uh, don't uh, do any design studies during your PhD, uh, but. But I mean, uh, at, at the end, too, once once you went through it, uh, through the pain of the experience, um, it was a very rewarding, um, 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 well, experience. So just to give you an example, so just to give you a, a, a little bit of insight of what can be done with um, CFD. Again, you don't have to use CFD for everything. So, for example, for early design stage, uh, you have, you could use some some simpler methods. But later on. Um, once you design your um, your uh, geometry, uh, what you realize is that <clears throat> there are a lot of things that are not uh, accounted for for with the simpler models, like for example, through, through flow code, uh, codes, which are um, usually by nature in in, in inviscid. And uh, once you have once you got all the viscosity um, or all, all the vi viscid effects, so basically friction in fluid, um, the, the the whole picture changes um, uh, quite a lot. And you see that um, initially when we started, we had a huge separation at the end of the booster, um, and and also some separations um, at the entry of the IGV. Um, <clears throat> and this is the sort of improvement that you can get with CVD. So <laughs> behind. Uh, between this step and this step, um, I don't know how many months are there, but uh, and how many iterations, but it's quite a lot. Um, but let's let's summarize it in 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 uh, uh, in that comparison. What what uh, so that you know give, to give you an idea what uh, improvements um, uh, can be achieved uh, uh, with with CFD. And um, uh, another uh, challenge that we faced during the um, the turbofan design studies uh, was not only um, um, okay, getting rid of the separations, etc. But um, a multi-stage machine um, is it's it's a very specific type of a design. So if you have a single stage, you don't worry so much uh, uh, too much the the performance of the stages. But if you have a multi-stage machine, like here, you have multiple stages um, at aerodynamic design point. Each stage is 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 matched to uh, to to receive a certain um, uh, in the density. Um, and um, uh, in ideal case, it would operate near its uh, peak efficiency. Um, so once we got uh, rid of the separations, it didn't mean that um, uh, uh, sorry, it didn't mean 
that uh, the stages are well matched so that saying that they are um operating close to to their um aerodynamic uh, well to the to the maximum efficiency and this is another study that we had to look well uh, run and um and um basically to 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 ma make sure that um the the final um configuration uh, um operates uh, uh, at at matched conditions Right, so now finally we're moving to the water injection studies. <clears throat> I'm uh, aware that this is only you know, um, a, a glimpses into, into the research that has been done and you might have a lot of questions. I might have uh, skin, skip a lot of uh, things that you would like to me to explain. So uh, what, what I forgot to tell uh, you at the beginning is that um, um, usually we have only like 15 minutes for a Q&A session. Um, this time I, I'm, I'm able to stay a little bit longer, maybe up to a half an hour. Uh, we have an extended Q and A session. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So, um, um, now about the um, um, uh, water injection itself. Uh, the first question that is good to ask as a as a CFD analyst, um, or you know, as, a, as as any analyst actually, if you intend to use CFD, why CFD? Why why? I mean, can I do it in in different methods? Remember. Uh, I am not guided here by my passion because I would always like I would like to always uh, CFD. But um, 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 if we have to solve a practical industrial problem, uh, you need to um, um, well, you need to find um, the, the the most effective way, right? So we did um, recently a comparison against an analytical model, <clears throat> which um, uh, highlights uh, very well, you know, the, the why we need actually. Um, or where we need the, the CFD. Um, without going much into details of, of, of that, uh, um, of, of these results, um, the, the, the outcome was that some parameters can be predicted by the analytical model very well, and some can be not, and some they, they, they basically not um, accounted for in the uh, analytical model. So for example, if you like the, uh, look at the temperature charts, the solid lines are the um, analytical model, uh, and the dashed lines are the predictions from the CFD. You see that at the inlet of the booster and at the outlet of the booster, the temperature match is is, is pretty pretty uh, uh, um, uh, satisfactory. It's actually it's, it's actually excellent, I would say. So if you want to predict the, the, the decrease in temperature due to the evaporative cooling that you have from water injection, you might be fine with our analytical model. But you can what you can do predict. Uh, um, uh, um, is what happens in between. And you see that CFD accounts actually for the compression during in the rotors and then the cooling in the starters and the compression again in the next rotor, cooling in the starter, etc. cetera. Um, and here are some, some uh, charts on the frac mass fractions, um, the water fraction, etc. cetera, also um, relatively well predicted. But um, in the analytical model, uh, you don't, uh, you don't, uh, um, you only calculate the thermodynamic effects. Um, you don't account for uh, the shape of the blades, uh, for, 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 for the geometry, for the turbulence, for, for all the aerodynamic ec uh, effects, for the three dimensionality of the flow field. Etc. So, if you're interested um, in in that sort of um, um, details, then obviously CFD um, um, is is beneficial or it's, it's it's necessary. And in our case, because we wanted to understand what is the um, uh, imp uh, what is the uh, impact on compressor efficiency, we needed to go into the details and uh, look at the compressor losses and uh, and do a thorough um, uh, entropy analysis, which is uh, which can be uh, easily described with an um, uh, uh, analytical model. So, before I'm gonna show you a few results, um, uh, just a quick glimpse at the uh, theory. I think um, I just have um, a very few slides on the theory. Uh, I was a bit reluctant to show you a theory at all, but. Um, I think you know it's crucial to understand how the, the analysis works. So the fluid itself, the, the continuous field, the, the um, um, airflow is solved in a Eulerian frame of reference. So basically um, um, an absolute frame of reference. Now for the particles, um, especially if the mass fractions are small, it's uh, much more practical 
to solve them in their own frame of reference. So basically as if you would sit on the particle and follow it through. So each particle is followed. Uh, and this is called Eulerian Lagrangian approach. So basically you can imagine, even if you're not, uh, uh, you're not a, a, a numerical person, that if you have a particle that has a constant velocity, uh, you, uh, you know your time, uh, uh, um, well, you want to calculate what distant, uh, distance uh, this distance has the particle uh, traveled uh, through a certain time, you can do it very easily uh, and you can, you can figure out where the particle will be um, uh, by, you know, in the next second, so to say. So now this becomes a little bit more complicated if the particle doesn't have a constant velocity. Um, um, but it's still um, possible to uh, calculate the acceleration rate for the, from the forces that act on the particle. And this is again, you know, an example, um, just to imagine you how the model works. If the particle has no mass, it just follows the path as it, you know, the initial path, initial direction. If it has mass, it is pulled down by the gravity and will end up somewhere else. So this is kind of the, 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 the model that, uh, that um, um, we applied. And those are some key assumptions. Uh, the really key um, crucial um, um, assumption here is that we applied full uh, coupling. Uh, so the particle has an effect on the air and the air has an effect uh, on the particle and, and so on. So in each alteration, this is taken into account. And this is very important because uh, their particles evaporate. And this is the second part of the trouble. So this model is for solid particles, but our particles are not solid, they're liquid and they evaporate. So there are many, many ways to set up, uh, uh, um, well, to, to model evaporation. The way how I approach it is uh, in three steps. So first of all, I said, okay, we have a particle. Uh, which is a liquid. The liquid is contained by the particle boundaries. Uh, um, it's called together by the surface tension. And then um, we have a, a, a very thin area at the um, particle surface where the liquid is trying to find its equilibrium, um, where the and it's changed its state. Uh, it, releases, it releases vapor, which is and modeled as a, as a binary mixture, basically. And then uh, the particles, obviously, they are... Um, um, convected at some point that the, the, the vapor particles um, or advected, um, better say, say, I think it's better to say advected um, um, uh, through the velocity field to the, to the dry air that surrounds the particle. And what you end up with is a, a gas mixture. So basically we have the dry air molecules plus the vapor molecules. And this has to be modeled as well as a separate uh, 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 thermodynamic instance. Uh, because it has a different properties than dry air. So again, this is a, a, a small table, uh, but behind those tables, we, there are a lot of sensitivity studies and, and um, a lot of um, uh, considerations, what kind of assumptions we can um, uh, apply to, to model the, the, um, the properties, um, uh, air properties, so that um, the model gives us reliable results. Right, so now we're getting into the injection, um, how, the, how the water was injected. So we know already how it looked like, uh, um, the final result. Um, this is the injection plane behind the fan again. Uh, I applied uh, uniform density. Uh, so basically the droplet size uh, uniform is partially distributed. Then the droplet size is not uniform. So we applied uh, a rosin lambda droplet distribution. So basically, it's the, the sense of it is to reflect uh, what happens in a real spray. In a real spray, even if you have a nominal diameter and you, you're, uh, well, yes, your uh, specs say, okay, the droplet produces 10 uh, microns diameter, still there will be the um, droplets that will be larger and that will be smaller. So it's much more realistic up to apply such a distribution. Um, and now we're coming to the, our final issue. Um, I need to, um, I want to speak about it as well because this is um, kind of um, um, one of the key aspects of, of the research, um, the wet compression, compression efficiency. So one trouble that we had is that uh, all of the, the, the efficiency definitions uh, that we used to um, are useful, um, applicable to uh, dry conditions where you don't have any heat transfer between the phases. So um, basically it just accounts the work um, that is put in into the compressor and it's related to the work uh, uh, um, that is, is, is um, 
uh, gotten out um, of it, uh, right? Or actually the the other way around. Um, and <clears throat> but again, <clears throat> the trouble is that we didn't have a means of um, um, accounting for for the fact that there's a heat transfer between the droplets and and the, the main field. So I inspired myself by a very good study uh, by Sabo and uh, Turner. Um, they, they defined the compressor efficiency um, as a, 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 a ratio of entropy generation in the compressor to enthalpy uh, um, balance. Uh, so basically uh, in, in layman terms, it's uh, the amount of losses that you have in the compressor uh, to the amount of energy that you put into the compressor. And this is valid for both phase because both entropy and, and enthalpy can be defined for uh, two phases. Now, um, I, I, I had a look at the, uh, the, well, it's possible to derive differential equations for the entropy um, uh, and for the enthalpy um, and um, um, have a cell-based, a numerical means of, of uh, uh, um, uh, calculating entropy. But the trouble is that the entropy peaks in the boundary layer region. Um, um, so very close to the blade, very close to the walls. I, I'm not sure I have here a picture of, of a blade. Um, that's okay. But you can imagine if you have a blade of a compressor blade, very close to the wall, uh, uh, there is a very strong velocity gradient because at the wall, just just at the at the at the surface, the the fluid doesn't move at all, and um, the entropy generation is is dependent uh, on 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 squared velocity gradient so basically uh, uh basically it's very hard to calculate it um um correctly in the in the wall so i i thought we have to come up with something simpler and then i proposed a, a thermodynamic approach where we uh, uh accounted uh, for the entropy uh, change um in the gas based on the on 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 um average thermodynamic properties of the field so maybe you can recognize the entropy change of the gas uh, uh this is this is um you would um have it also in in a, 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 a dry gas um uh, this is basically entropy of dry compression and then uh, you have some additional terms like entropy change of liquid just the fact that the liquid changes the temperature um, um adds entropy to the uh, multi-phase flow and then you have entropy change of vapor or maybe you could view it as a as a basically an entropy change of of um uh due to the uh, evaporation and the the enthalpy is um, um, defined in, in a similar way, right? So <clears throat> now let's have a look, um, a, a quick look at, at, at the results. Um, um, this is um, well. The intention was um, the whole study um, uh, included some some of the uh, off, perf off performance uh, design sorry off design performance cases. Uh, uh, today I'm going to focus only on, on on one point, which is the takeoff, um, and uh, show you a little bit um, what is the influence of the droplets uh, size, etc. But the idea was to design uh, run an analysis. Which will cover the, the 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 design space basically, and would uh, provide understanding. Okay, uh, what is the uh, impact of uh, varying the the water fraction, for example? What is the impact of um, sorry, var varying the uh, the droplet size, etc. Um, so <clears throat> this is um, perhaps one of the. Uh, um, well, main highlights to look at first. Um, as an engineer, uh, you're interested, um, okay, what's happening to my liquid? Um, and again, bear in mind, those are CFD results. So <clears throat> I <clears throat> I was tempted to show you um, uh, colorful pictures, but the, 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 the uh, reality is that um, uh, colorful pictures, they don't um, really um, bring a lot of uh, meaning um, into the uh, uh, into the sub subject, a lot of uh, insight into the subject, unless unless one, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, in, in some cases it's useful to have them, but in, in this case it's uh, it's much better to look at at the average results, so that we we can we can kind of single out uh, uh, from the data what's most important. So this is the liquid and uh, and vapor fraction. Um, so as you expect, the liquid keeps evaporating. So the liquid uh, fraction drops down. The vapor content increases in the compressor. 
Uh, and what is interesting is that for smaller droplet sizes, uh, the the um, uh, amount of vapor is much higher, uh, um, <clears throat> and this is linked to the fact that small droplets evaporate faster. I guess this is not a surprise. Um, so let, 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 let's 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 move on. And this is where it becomes um, a little bit more interesting. So uh, <clears throat> and this is the air mass flow per booster station. So what it uh, 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 what it tells me basically is that uh, due to the um, um, uh, water uh, uh, injection at each station, um, the the uh, gas mass flow, the, the mass flow of the of the mixture. Uh, increases, and, and this is because um, this um, uh, the mechanism behind it is twofold. So one uh, 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 influence is that okay, you injecting water and it becomes vapor, so you have added mass, but this is ra rather insignificant. But then, due to the cooling of the of the uh, um, airflow, you have uh, um, decrease in density, and this is what you see uh, what is happening in the compressor and. Um, um, this is important to notice because it has it, it has a, an impact on how the stages uh, operate and basically with water injection you sort of mismatch the stages again. Um, <clears throat> so it's yeah it might be good or it might be wrong uh, it might be bad we will see um, uh, in, in a while how how it um, uh, actually what what's the, the final outcome. Um, then the. Overall engine mass flow. So, if you account, if you take into uh, account the core and the bypass, it increases. So, again, it's it's we know already that the density decreases. So, there is um, a, a, the denser flow through the uh, through the engine, and therefore the mass flow must increase. And we also injected water, so the water comes on top of it. So, the engine mass flow increases. Now, this is um, uh, uh, I thought this is this is quite interesting as well because I was interested whether. <clears throat> Whether water tends to evaporate more in the rotor stations where the where the fluid is compressed, and or in stators, and you see that actually uh, uh, it's it's sort of um, um, balanced out across the rotor and stators. Rotors usually have a little bit um, tighter; uh, they bit bit narrower. So you see that that um, in, in in indirect way that there is a profound influence of. Um, um, of the residence time. And also what you can see here is that the water evaporates effectively at small injection rate. So if you <clears throat> inject uh, uh, water at a higher rate, uh, you have higher cooling, which is kind of um, 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 prevents the droplets from, uh, from, from a quick evaporation because um, you have uh, um, a lower uh, well, saturation uh, point. <clears throat> All right. Um, this is the temperature, so probably uh, it's a very uh, um, um, uh, something that that everyone from you would like, expect uh, uh, because the droplets evaporate, they, they they cool they cool down the flow. Um, what you can see here uh, is that the the um, what the water injection cases are not only uh, um, uh, they not only have a, a lower volumes, but they, they diverge from the dry case. And this is because you have um, um, also an additional cooling in the stators. So usually the temperature stays more or less constant um, during the dry case, but here the droplets keep evaporating through, throughout the stators. Um, now, this is something that we wouldn't be able to get from an analytical model, for example, which is uh, a, a visualization of the fact that there's heat transfer between the air phase and uh, and uh, liquid. So the liquid temperature increases, and uh, 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 as the air temperature increases, uh, initially actually it drops down. It's quite interesting because uh, of the high, high evaporation rate at the very beginning, and and the fact that the droplets are um, that the flow is accelerated. Um, um, there's an initial drop, and then later on. Um, the the um, temperature of droplets increase. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, <clears throat> in terms of the efficiency, um, uh, we what are the implications of that? And this is where we started to look at the enthalpy uh, in the flow and and entropy because this is uh, eventually what comes what goes into the um, uh, efficiency uh, equation, right? Um, so. One perhaps one of the uh, 
one of one, one of one of the most important realization is that the displacement work uh, um, uh, decreases for if water is injected. What is displacement work? Well, basically, it's 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 the how hard is it is com to compress uh, a, a, a fluid. Um, and uh, you can see um, and that with water injection, because the fluid is cooled down, um, actually we need to put uh, less work into compressing it than, um, than, than in a, a dry case. Um, right, uh, this doesn't, still doesn't mean that the efficiency will be better because we have to think, okay, can we, we, are we put, putting less um, work into compressing it, but there are, are, are different uh, phenomena like heat exchange between the droplets and and the entropy generated by the evaporation. So is the entropy generation of that process um, also uh, uh, smaller? And um, how they both uh, scale, right? And this is <clears throat> the entropy generation chart. Again, <clears throat> we had a look at, 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 at many details in the flow field, but this is a sort of uh, the summary of it. Uh, and you can see that with this uh, small exception here, for all cases, the uh, the mm, entropy generations in, in the compressor uh, when the water is injector is smaller than in in in, in a dry case, <clears throat> and all of it together uh, lead to the result that we do have an increase uh, in compressor um, efficiency uh, if water is injected. This, however, depends strongly on the injection rate and the droplet, the droplet diameter, especially on the droplet diameter. So you can see that for droplet diameters uh, uh, that are um, um, 20 micron, uh, the, the gain, the benefits from water injection are much smaller uh, or, or, or even, even the efficiency decreases. But with very finely automized droplets, uh, uh, we, we could um, uh, get uh, uh, benefits. So for the for the whole booster, uh, uh, booster plus IGV, uh, uh, I, I calculated a benefit of four uh, percent in increase of efficiency. So I, I, I I'm aware that uh, this number might be. Uh, um, a little bit um, um, conservative. It depends uh, also on the on the case um, on the on the turbofan um, geometry. But uh, um, it's a, it's a very a promising trend that um, hasn't been um, uh, seen before or, or ca calculated before. So I, I'm afraid I need to. I, I'm running out of time. It's it's been an hour already. Um, and just to show you a little bit uh, what what was happening be beyond the, those charts, I, I I don't I won't let you without some colorful char ch uh, charts. Uh, we we looked um, as engineers. We obviously ask ourselves, okay, what are the primary components of uh, uh, entropy generation. So, as it turns out, um, entropy generations, as I told you, is, is uh, um, um, the losses, so to say. Um, they are uh, made of the friction between the fluid elements, the uh, heat conduction between the fluid elements, the uh, the, the uh, droplet, well, the heat transfer between the droplets, etc. But <clears throat> the viscous entropy generation, so basically the, the the losses generated due to the fluid friction, are 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 most significant. They are by far uh, more than fifty percent of the total losses. So we, we had a look. Okay, what happens if we inject water? Um, um, what happens to the to the fluid friction, and then what, what we try to single out what uh, parameters are the the main driving factors for 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 those changes. So one is the temperature. So obviously, if the temperature changes, it has a lot of uh, uh, well, it has an impact on the viscosity. This has an impact on the effective viscosity, which is basically the turbulent viscosity and the dynamic viscosity. This has again an effect uh, 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 on the uh, turbulence kinetic energy the shear strain rate the vorticity you know, all these things all this uh, all these uh, details that happen ha happen in the flow also uh, um, um, there is another in 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 influencing factor which is the vapor fraction so the vapor fraction because you you have more and more vapor throughout the stages it alters the thermodynamic uh, properties um, um, of the flow so uh, eventually we we have been able to to um, uh, lead back some some of the changes in the flow to the um, um, observed uh, trends uh, in the uh, well 
in the entropy savings, so to say, or, or in, in, in less entropy generation when water is injected. Mm. <clears throat> so just to summarize, um, a, a few points, a really, really just, 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 uh, just two or three points. Um, uh, we could say much more about this, but um, what we saw is that the effect of water injection uh, is uh, um, well. It depends on the interact well on the uh, how the um, um, enthalpy balance or the, the the energy that you put into the fluid scales with the uh, uh, losses uh, at which the process happens. And we saw that the fast evaporation at elevated temperatures is is desired, which might point, for example, to a uh, interstage injection. We could we could uh, have a discussion later on on on, on possible future concept. Um, then we saw that the changes in local entropy generation are driven by the altered thermodynamic um, properties uh, of the gas, and um, uh, they 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 increase. Um, I didn't say that uh, because again I'm running out of time, but um, uh, they 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 have some effect on the turbines as well. Uh, which, which um, uh, in some cases it's positive. So especially um, in the separation uh, regions, if you have a, a more turbulent flow, the flow uh, um, tends to detach um, uh, at a later point. And uh, the research is really, a, 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 I would say, a, a, a cornerstone, cornerstone for, for further research, hopefully, uh, where we can look at things like, um, okay, where where we can, um, how we can. Um, um, utilize the the uh, gained insight to um, um, refine the injection position, um, the atomization, etc. Um, at the end, I, I would like to. Well, I mean, this this event is is sort of uh, it marks a very special um, time in 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 my research life, so to say, because I will be defending my research very soon and. I thought it's an appropriate moment to uh, thank uh, uh, some people that supported me throughout the study. So this this list is actually very long, but I had to uh, make it short. And I would like to thank to my uh, beloved wife, uh, Roxana. Without her um, support, I guess um, this uh, progress wouldn't be possible. To my family for the constant prayer. And um, to uh, people that supported me professionally, Arthur, Alejandro, uh, uh, we, 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 I'm sorry for the typo, really, <laughs> and prof, uh, Professor uh, uh, Perry, Perry, this. Thank you.